With the Sharks' recent run of success, what does that mean for this team's ceiling for this season? Plus, the big question of when Logan Couture comes back, what happens with Mikel Granlund? Who plays where? Um, and then with this run, does this change the facts uh, or for Mike Greer and what his plan is for this season? So we're going to kind of discuss some of the big questions around the Sharks um, after their recent run of success. So all that and more on today's episode. Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, a contributor at San Jose Hockey Now, and I want to thank you for making Locked on Sharks your first listen. Probably part of the Locked on Network, we cover your team every day. And if you want to be an everydayer, all you have to do is just follow along wherever you get podcasts or you can watch on YouTube as well. And today we're going to be kind of discussing, taking a kind of a step back discussing some of the big questions slash storylines around the Sharks right now, and especially after this run um, where they had a really nice road trip, right? Um, going three, two, and one um, on the road trip with many comeback wins and just playing good, competent hockey, which is something we haven't seen from the Sharks in a while. And just kind of taking a reset here to see, discuss what is this team ceiling? Um and then what happens when Couture comes back? What happens with Mikel Granlin? What do you do there? And then does this kind of change Mike Greer's plan, his timeline uh, with this recent run of success? So before we get into all that, do want to let you know that today's episode is brought to you guys by Sleeper. Uh, download the Sleeper app. Use promo code Locked On NHL to get a hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. <laughs> So the Sharks um, have really kind of started to dig themselves out of a hole recently, right? Uh, you look at the beginning of the season where they lost 11 straight to start the season, didn't get their first win until they played the Flyers. And um, really since then, you've seen a much different team. Um, you know, in that 11-game losing streak, they got uh, blown out by 10 goals in multiple times, like just some of the worst hockey you have seen in your life um in, in some of those and kind of since that flyers game and you know really i would say kind of beginning of this right before this road trip right the, the sharks team has really found something um with the way that they're playing and you know you can i think point to mikhail granlin's kind of emergence right start of the season dealing with some injuries missed a lot of training camp and preseason came back was also you know just Cattell wasn't 100%, really kind of struggling to kind of fit into his role, um, find chemistry with his line mates, and then, all, of course, the injuries on top of that. But over the past couple of weeks, you have seen the emergence of two, like, good uh, top units between the Hurdle Eklund, um, Barrow Banoff, and then the Duclair Zettelin um Granlin lines. And these have been both these guys have both these lines have been really pulling their weights. And you can point to Granlin and Hurdle as kind of being the engines for both those lines, right? Uh Tomas Hurdle winning the second star of the week in the NHL this pack week past week, and Mikel Granlin last week also being named the NHL Players Association Player of the Week. So um things I did not think I would be saying. Um, at any time this season because of just how poor I thought the Sharks would be this year. And um, granted, again, this, this team is still f far from, from perfect and it still has a lot of issues. But, you know, I, I think we can look at this team as a scrappy be there in the end type of team. Now, what does that mean when it, you say be there in the end? They, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not predicting it, but I wouldn't be surprised if this team is kind of in like, you know, when you start getting closer to the playoff time and you see those in the hunt uh, kind of, you know, graphics and stuff. Um, wouldn't be shocked if the Sharks are kind of starting to float around with those. And they, they do have a lot of work to go. And as of right now, um, you know, and on Monday night, um, I think most of the teams are done. Uh, Calgary and Colorado is still playing right now as I record. Um, but 
you know, they're, they're still dead last, right? They have 19 points this, this year. Um, and the playoffs you're looking at right now, it's 30, I think it's kind of 28 or 30. So you're, you're about 10 points. We'll just say 10 points behind of making a playoff spot at this moment. Um, that's still, a, it doesn't sound like a lot, but that is, that is five like you have to win five more games than whoever's in front of you and there's still plenty of time to do that um and kind of be in it and but at the same time you're still the last team in the nhl right you're still 19 points dead last in the nhl um and a lot of these teams in front of you do have games in hand so you still have to you know not only do you have to jump these teams you have to jump these teams while having less margin of error because you dug yourself in such a huge hole to begin the season but um that doesn't mean i don't think that this team can't at least be competitive right now i think that's the big thing is being competitive throughout the season and showing growth and we have seen a lot of growth um you know within the last three four weeks right of this team just kind of Finding a stride offensively. Um, you're getting good goaltending out of Capo Kakin and Mackenzie Blackwood. I know Blackwood had kind of started the season like a house on fire um, and has cooled off here a little bit. And the way he's playing at the beginning of the season wasn't sustainable. But I still think this team all said and done, though, even with the, the improved play, I still think this is going to be one of the five worst teams in the NHL. And that's okay, right? Um, for the sake of the franchise and the long term health of the franchise, I still think trying to collect premier draft picks um, is the way to go. Um, And we'll talk more about if this changes the plan here at the end of the show. And we've seen that no matter what uh, the circumstances are, this team is not out of any game, right? Coming back from two goals, three goals, four goals. It doesn't matter. This team has been able to come back recently on this road trip, but that's just not sustainable hockey, right? As fun as it is, um, good teams don't put themselves in that situation to begin with. And I I think that is going to be a big thing for the Sharks going forward is, um, yes, the comebacks are really fun. And we've had a lot of fun with this. You're still having to come back from multiple goals and you've been able to do it three games in a row. It's just not a sustainable formula, right? Um, You can look at, look at the ducks earlier this season, right? Um, When they were on their hot streak, it was a lot of it was, due to comebacks late in the third period. Now this team has kind of hit rock bottom and they have been one of the worst teams, right? They've been one in nine in their last 10 games. And I think that it's even worse than that. If you go kind of stretch it out further and have gone from a playoff position to now the third worst team in the NHL. But um, for this team though, to right now, yes, I think the ceiling is still if everything goes well and breaks right, you might be flirting with a potential playoff spot. But realistically, I still think this is a lot of the same old sharks. And we're probably just getting a regression to the mean from what we started from the uh, beginning of the season, right? Yeah, this team was 0 for 11 and one of the worst teams in, in it, uh, like that that we had ever seen in NHL history. And now we're getting the pendulum swing the other way of, wow, this team is really fun to watch. They're coming back from insane victories. Um, they're probably more middle, right? Um, I think, and that is more of what you would want to expect, right? You you, you can't play um, the worst hockey you've ever seen in your entire life and then play the, or play the, um, like, we're going to come back from four goals a game type of hockey. It seems probably in the middle, and I think this is more, that's where they land as the season kind of continues to bear out as a team that is, we're probably going to be in most games, Um we're probably going to be that like scrappy gritty. We'll, we'll grind out a couple wins here and there, but um, we're just still very talent poor. Um, And again, for the future of the franchise, it's probably best that they continue to ride, you know, just continue with the long-term plan and don't let three weeks of out, unsustainable play um, kind of change everything. So we'll talk more about that. Uh, we'll talk about Granlin and Couture here in just one second. Um, but before we do that, a new NHL season brings all sorts of possibilities. Um, one of the Sharks could maybe hit 20 goals. I'm looking at you, Tomas Hurdle, maybe 30 goals for Hurdle this season. Um, the Sharks could definitely win the draft lottery and you can win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on sleeper uh the official daily fantasy hockey app of the 
Locked On NHL Network, Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports, especially daily fantasy hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. Um, all you have to do is either pick some of the stars in the NHL, like Ovechkin, Crosby, or McKinnon, or pick some of your favorite players, like Hurdle, Slippery Pete, or Mikhail Granlin, um, and they'll record more or less of their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. To win 100 times bet, you just need to correct we predict the outcome of eight player stats. You Herbie Sharks fans, you can win a hundred times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleepers. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code locked on NHL. You'll get a hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability. All right. Um, I think one of the big questions that I've been asked a bunch of times and, you know, we, we talked a little bit about Mikel Granlin and the way he's playing right now um, is what happens when KOTOR comes back. What do you do? Right. Um, and there's plenty of options that we'll go through. But um, again, I'm not trying to jump the gun here. KOTOR started to skate. We'll probably they didn't have practice on Monday after the return from the um, their, you know, long uh, road trip. But um, they got a game on Tuesday, um, we'll probably hear more about Kotor. I wouldn't be surprised if we get an update with him. But from the sound of it, he's starting to skate. They're trying to be very, very cautious with him, especially with the setbacks that he has had so far this year. We still don't know what the injury is. Um, if I'm playing a doctor, and I'm not a doctor, I just stayed at a Holiday Inn last night. Um, I would say it's either one of two things. I think it's either a groin injury that has been nagging him um, constantly. And especially with the constant setbacks, right? Where you maybe try to push it, push it, push it. Um, and that's part of the recover rest, the recovery program, right? Is you rest. Okay. You do a little bit more. Okay. You rest, do a little bit more, you rest and see kind of how far you can push it and see how it responds. Um, so again, I am just guessing right now. So if it's, it's either, a, a ligament injury, um, which didn't require surgery, and he's just trying to let it, um, you know, heal, or it's a groin injury. Those are my two guesses. Again, not a doctor, uh, don't have any information. I just, you know, stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night. So, what to do though with with Graylin and Couture when Couture eventually comes back? And what I would do personally is. The way that the second line of Duclair, again, we don't know Duclair's injury issues, but assuming Duclair is healthy um, at some point here re relatively soon, um, I'm keeping that Duclair, Zetterlin, um, Grandlin line together as your 1A, 1B, however you want to see it, right? Between, so you keep your hurdle, Bear Ban off. Um, Eklund line together because that line has been playing really well. Um, you keep your Granlin, Duclair, um, Zettelin line together. And then I'm playing Logan Couture on the 3C. Um, reason why? A couple reasons. One, you don't have to kind of rush Couture back here as much because, again, still coming back from an injury. Um, I would like to see him kind of Right, you don't want to throw him back in there, and especially with how important Couture is, especially for the penalty kill and on the power play and stuff. Let him kind of build things back up for now. Two, you've been struggling at four C, right? Phillips and Dino played four C last year uh, with Ryan Carpenter being injured. I don't know when Ryan Carpenter is going to be back, et cetera, et cetera. But I would play Couture at three C and bump. Nico Sturm down to the four C because then I think you have a really strong middle with Hurdle, Granlin, um, Couture, and then uh, Nico Sturm. Right? You you have a real one A one B top two pair, top two guys. You have a souped up three C and Logan Couture who'd probably be a two C on most teams, and then you have a four C in Nico Sturm. That's again um, has been your three C right now. So. Those are that's what I would do. And I, I get the like maybe you put Couture, move Granlin back to the wing. Granlin's played wing a lot in his recent day, you know, recent seasons. Um, but the way that 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 line is playing right now, I just don't want to break it up because I think you keep that chemistry going, right? We've seen this this team kind of struggle to 
put together any chem any chemistry because of so many moving pieces right how many guys have been out for the season you know been out for weeks at a time due to injuries um even you know over the past couple of seasons with just so many moving pieces um those two top two lines are playing really well and then if you have logan couture with maybe like a mike hoffman on your 3c or kevin LeBanc or philip sedina or whomever you want to put on like you can you know luke cunning um like then you're like okay you you have you go from two good lines to three good lines with, with logan Gator as your 3c um and again especially with we don't know what his injury issue is we're, we're still trying you know projecting trying to guess read the tea leaves with it you can kind of slide him back in right you can kind of maybe if you want to play more of special teams right being a, a big part on the power play being a big part on the penalty kill um we know Graylin, we know Sturm have both been great on the, the penalty kill. Um, Zettelin looks like he's got that dog in him when he plays on that penalty kill. Like you can kind of, you don't have to ask Couture to do as much as he has the past couple seasons. And um, I think that's, and especially for, he played really well last year, but again, Couture is, you know, starting to get a little bit older. And I think trying to protect him a little bit from himself right now, isn't the worst thing in the world. So um, I get, I, that's what I would do. If if you wanted to put Kotor on the the second line, kind of, you know, you're a captain. We don't want to, you know, you don't want to get Wally pipped. Um, I think it's the second time I've said that in like a week now. You don't want to get Wally pipped um, from your spot. But I do think that um, if you want to do that, then what I would do, what I would do is I would put, I would change a lot of the top six. And I would go... Um, Hurdle, Eklund, Duclair as your first line. Um, then I would go Bear, Banoff, uh, Kotor, and then Grantland. Uh, because we one, we saw how well the Grantland line, the sorry, excuse me, we saw how well the Duclair, Duclair, the Kotor, Bear, Banoff combo worked last year. And I think Grantland can play off that as well. Um, Kotor can kind of score all the greasy goals. We, I think Barabanov still been a little slow coming back from his injury. Um, but I, I think by the time Kotor is back, maybe hopefully Barabanov is kind of fully back, uh, ready to go in, in, in with that line. Then your third line would be kind of, you know, Sturm, Cunning, um, Hoffman, or, you know, you can kind of continue to mix and match guys down there um, with, with whoever's playing well and, and such. But um, I don't know. I just, I would like, I think the way, especially the way Grandland's playing right now, I would like to kind of keep things status quo. Um, and then if things start to stop working or if, if Grandland takes like a huge step back or whatever it is, then you can kind of shake things up and um, just let Couture kind of gently slide back into the role uh while you let uh some of the you know while you let guys like Grandland who continue to play well um and i think in the long run it's going to protect logan couture because maybe now you're not having asking him to play 20 minutes a night you know maybe you're you're at like a 17 minutes and then he can kind of focus on being good defensively um being strong on the penalty kill being an asset in the power play gives you two better power play units so um that's what i would do not that uh david quinn has asked me for my input but if he does that's what i would do so um before we continue and talk about um if this changes you know with this run with Kotor coming back potentially soon uh with the sharks hopefully starting to get a little bit healthier um if this ch kind of changes the plan for mike greer this season um before we get into all that here in just one second Passion, drive, and patience, what brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts from your uh, number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guarantee Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply eBay guarantee fit only available to you as customers. 
All right. So I think the other kind of big question with these sharks right now is, um, does this change things, right? Uh, especially with hopefully getting healthier, um, the way the sharks are playing. And it shouldn't, right? Mike Greer's job as the general manager is to have the long-term outlook of the Sharks on his mind, right? David Quinn is day-to-day, how do I get this team playing as best as can? Mike Greer is, how does this team look a year from now, three years from now, five years from now? Um, That is his long-term goal. And I don't think three weeks of of fun play – should change your outcome. And again, like I talked about in the first segment, uh, this team is still dead last in tankathon, right? They are still the 19 points, um, 10 points behind from a, just even getting into a wild card spot. Right. Um, and you're going to get into the wild card. And if you make the playoffs, you're going to have to play, um, Vegas who crushes you every time you play them. Um, yes, I know they came back last game, but, um, LA, who's really good, like Colorado, like you're going to have to play a a behemoth uh, of a team up front. And while, yes, anything could happen when you get into the playoffs, I I don't want to take a one-year bump for something that maybe isn't sustainable, right? Especially with how many older guys are kind of driving the play, right? Um, is Mikel Granlin going to be here in three years? Probably not, right? Anthony Duclair, maybe. Mike Hoffman is not. Like, Nico Sturm, maybe. Kevin LeBanc is not. Like, all the guys who are kind of big contributors are most likely not going to be here in three years. So is it worth getting into the playoffs and potentially getting stomped? Um and then having a kind of a going into next year thinking maybe we're better than we are. Um, maybe we're ahead of the rebuild. No, it's my career has been very adamant. We're going to build this thing the right way. Right. Um, I still think my career is going to be a big seller at the trade deadline. And I think that is the best um, road for these sharks. And the best thing about the recent play is you're getting contributions from guys who are potential trade candidates, right? Mike Hoffman has started to score recently. Mikel Granlin, I know he's got two years left on his deal, but I think a lot of teams would love to have a guy like Mikel Granlin, the way Mikel Granlin's playing right now, um, help out their team, right? Um, you know, look at the defense, right? Mario Ferraro got his first goal of the season. Um, you know, potential trade candidate like um, Capo Kakinen and Mackenzie Blackwood um, both have been playing outstanding this season and have, have shown flashes of brilliance at times. Um, and I think a lot of teams would like to have what, you know, and it's not like the Sharks defense in front of them has played well, right? You know, even that Vegas game, how many odd man rushes, two on ones, did Capo see and he made a lot of saves and in that game and kept the sharks in that game um, from it being an absolute bloodbath um, going into the season. You know, the, I think the daily face off had the, that tandem ranked last or second to last, one of the worst in the NHL. And I think that that has been the shark strong point this season has been their goaltending. And with, Capo Kakinen on an expiring deal and Mackenzie Blackwood on a very cheap two year deal. I think both those pieces are still potential trade candidates if Mike Greer wants to go down that avenue. Um, I don't think this changes. I think Mike Greer, like I talked about, right? Um, the Sharks weren't as bad as the 0 and 11 that we saw at the beginning of the season, that team that was you know basically the like living embodiment of the guy trying to wash his car and juggling all the buckets and spilling everything. Um, they weren't that bad and but they're also not this like cardiac sharks team that we're gonna come back from two, three, four goals um every game because neither one of those were sustainable models. Um so I, I think Mike Greer, hopefully Mike Greer continues with the long term we're going to build this the right way. We're going to get the foundational pieces, right? You've already have Will Smith, who's looking great in college. Um, 
Quentin Musty, who's looking like a steal already. Um, Shakir Mukabadun, Luca Cagnoni, uh, William Eklund, who's really starting to kind of ripen, you know, into his own. Daniel Gushin, who, you know, is going to be pushing for an NHL job here soon. Like, you have a lot of these pieces that are starting to kind of come into play. Um, but I don't think my career is going to rush the process. If, if the, I, again, I don't expect them to be buyers unless it's a smart piece right a a long-term piece um like the kalen addison right young defenseman who's maybe kind of misplaced in his current position come here see what you can do in our spot like i i that would be what i would expect for my career and we'll spend more time you know coming up soon uh talking about how these pieces what what these pieces are potentially trade pieces and what you can get back for them as we start to get a little bit closer to the trade deadline but none of the sharks play like if the sharks were just going out and flattening teams like five to one um you know and doing this against the teams that they did it right if they did that against the rangers and vegas and um detroit all these teams have been very good this year but they just beat them soundly um that's a different conversation right of a team that is putting things together and and kind of controlling the pace of play um getting a lot of different scoring but all these games have been like crazy hectic. Um, you know, this hasn't happened since tungsten O'Doul type of, of games uh, for the Sharks, right? Where you're just getting these insane stats from, you know, from them, uh, from what they've done. So, uh, again, I don't think this changes 100%, right? And it should not change. You, your long-term calendar and expectations for this franchise should not change because of three weeks of of crazy play and more likely you know one week of crazy play so um we'll, we'll keep we'll enjoy the craziness while it's lasting because it's really fun to watch the sharks play right now um especially with the chemistry that these guys are starting to have um you know you're seeing hopefully Eklund's back here soon Hurdle's playing well. Granlin's playing well. You're you're getting contributions from a lot of different guys. Um, but don't let this don't let this flash or this um change the way you do business for the next one to five years for for micro and i don't think he's going to do that right he he's basically says from day one we're going to do this the right way we're going to do this the right way um and even now with the like Mario Faro might be available, like some of the guys who might be potentially available. I think Mike Greer is smart enough to know this is this model of insane comebacks is just not sustainable. So um, that's going to be it for me today. We'll be back tomorrow with a recap of the Winnipeg Jets game. Uh, maybe we'll do a little prospect brief here soon. Um, also have Hattie uh, Kalakash from the Locked on NHL Prospects uh, episode, uh, podcast coming out. We're going to be doing a nice World Juniors preview where we're going to talk about kind of World Juniors at, at large, uh, focus on the Sharks prospects, and then which – NHL draft prospects uh, you need to know. Uh, so that's going to be coming probably on Thursday. Uh, so plenty of good stuff here at Locked on Sharks. So make sure you guys are following along wherever you get podcasts. And of course, you can watch on YouTube as well. Um, you can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Locked on Sharks. You can follow me on Twitter at my fryhole. And until tomorrow, bye, friends.